Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. down to Mr. Drysdale's bank for a business meeting. You seen Jethro? Yes, sir. He's in a kitchen messing with his chemistry set. Well, tell him to fetch the truck around. Yes, sir, pal. Him and his fool chemistry set. Look what he done to my hair. How'd he do that? Invented something called Bodine hair darkener. <laughs> Turned me into a platinum blonde. Now, nice shine to it. Shine, it glows in the dark. <laughs> in the middle of a great experiment. If this works... It works! I've done it! Done what? Invented purple orange juice. <laughs> I am going to make a fortune! How? How? When somebody comes along and needs purple orange juice, he's going to have to deal with me. <laughs> Granny's going to turn purple when she sees this man. Pa wants you to drive him down to the bank. Hot dog! That'll give me a chance to show them my greatest discovery of all. What's that? Something scientists have been trying to find for years. Where'd you get it? I didn't get it. I invented it. <laughs> this peel can turn water into gasoline. <laughs> all us great scientists gets laughed at. <laughs> that don't bother us none. Someday you'll be proud to say that she was my lab assistant. Oh, well, what does the lab assistant do? Cleans up a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Drysdale's getting together some fellas to form what you call a syndicate. What's a syndicate? I don't know. What to do? I don't know that neither, but whatever it is, I don't want to be late for it. <laughs> it works, Uncle Jim. It works. What works, boy? My new invention, the Bodine gasoline pill. Gasoline pill? Yes, sir. You see, for years and years and years and years, scientists have been looking for Explain a way... Explain it to me on the way to the bank. I always like to be a little early. You will be. This rascal runs like a jackrabbit on my pill. No speeding now. Bye, Granny. <laughs> How's it going, Miss Hathaway? Everything ready? Right, Chief. Vintage champagne, chilled to perfection, imported caviar. Oh, good. You know, Mrs. Sebastian is used to the best. What a man. Sponge King, shipping magnet. You got the expensive caviar, I hope. Ten dollars an ounce. <laughs> Ten dollars an ounce? That's impossible. Well, see for yourself. Ten ounces, one hundred dollars. <laughs> you left one in there. <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, all right, but let's leave the can around so Sebastian can see it. <laughs> that will hardly impress a man like Mr. Lucas Sebastian. He is purported to be a billionaire. Yeah. <laughs> Think of that. Real live billionaire. And quite a remarkable man. Adventurer, world traveler, oceanographer, authority in marine biology. One billion dollars. <laughs> That's a thousand. Million. His concept that the form of the future lies at the bottom of the ocean is absolutely brilliant. A real live billionaire. How exciting. Farming the ocean's depths. Doing what? Farming the depths of the ocean for food. Well, whose nutty idea is that? <laughs> Mr. Sebastian. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. You mean you didn't ask why he wants to organize a syndicate? 
Look, when you get a chance to hook up with a man like Lucas Sebastian, you don't go asking foolish questions. <laughs> Everything that man touches turns to gold. <laughs> you must be talking about Jed Clampett. That sounds like a perfect description. <laughs> oh, no, no, Fleming, John. I was talking about the man who was going to head up our new syndicate, Lucas Sebastian. Well, what are we going to finance? Home movies? Oh, of course not. Uh, Mr. Sebastian wants you to see a <laughs> film about this project. Yes, he has a brilliant plan to farm the depths of the ocean. Farm the depths of the ocean? How does that sound to you, Fleming? Well, if Jet Clampett goes for it, you can count me in. He's yet to make a wrong move. One of the shrewdest investors I've ever seen. Yes, I, I make all his investments. You know, a classic example is that broken down movie studio he picked up for a song. Five million, wasn't it? Uh, five and a half. I you hear that? Five and a half million dollars. And I'll bet anything is worth 25 today. And the man's a genius. It was my idea. <laughs> I'm the genius. By the way, Melvin, where is Clampett? He's coming, isn't he? Well, of course he's coming. And when he gets here, he'll tell you himself that I'm the brains behind his every move. You poor guy. It must be rough living in the shadow of a financial wizard like Clampett. <laughs> wizard is right. He dresses like a hasty, drives around in an old truck, talks like a farmer, and when you think you've got him, wham! I hear that even that big kid that drives him around puts on a hick act. Oh, yes, that's Clampett's nephew. He's probably got an IQ of 180. <laughs> so, put together a little of this and a little of that and come up with a Bodine gasoline pill. You drop it in a tank of water and a car will run on it, huh? Yes, sir. We are running on it right now. Hmm. Seem to be chugging along good as ever. Makes no difference. I'll switch back to the gasoline tank so you can see for yourself. Seem to be running as good on gas as it did on your water. Uh oh. Uh oh, what? I got the valve in backwards. We've been running on gas. Right now he's running on water. Right now we ain't running. I'll switch back to gas. I kind of think the Bodine gasoline pill needs a little more work. I kind of agree. <laughs> Due down the bank in five minutes, I ain't ever been late in my life. Uncle Jed? What? Face the first time for everything. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Hathaway. Why, I'm Mr. Sebastian. I have your film all ready to project. Oh, thank you. This is a little token of my appreciation for your scholarly interest in my undersea farming project. Oh, you, you shouldn't have, really. Oh, my goodness. Why, it's a, a sponge? Yes, one of the finest ever brought up by my divers. Well, but why, it's, it's absolutely magnificent, just beautiful. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, Mr. Lucas Sebastian. Mr. Sebastian, welcome, welcome. I'm Milburn Drysdale. This is a great honor, a great pleasure. Uh, how do you do, sir? You know, meeting you is a privilege I've been looking forward to for many years, and I hope... <clears throat> oh, I'd like to present Mr. Fleming Pendleton and Mr. John Cannaday. Mr. Drysdale, yeah. my hand. Uh, what, what about it? I'd like it back. Oh, yes. Sorry. Gentlemen, uh, shake hands with Mr. Lucas Sebillion. Oh, Sebastian. How do you do, sir? How, How do you do, sir? How do you do, Mr. Sebastian? Oh, oh, uh, sit down, sit down. <laughs> Have some champagne? Have you uh, oh, uh, no, I, no, I'm on a very strict diet. What? Yes, uh, if, in fact, if you don't mind, I think I'll sit over there where I won't be tempted. Diet? <laughs> Take this caviar back to the store and get my hundred bucks. But the can has been opened. Solder it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting it. 
Try her now, Uncle Jed. Step down on that old starter. Still full of bodine gasoline, huh? Yes, sir. But I'll get it running. Well, I better commence walking. I'm late now. No, no, Uncle Jed. I promised I'd get you to the bank on this truck, and I'm gonna do it. Ow! You steer, I'll push. <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Clampett will be here any moment. He's never late. Well, he's late now. My time is limited. Now, if these gentlemen would care to see the film, I'd be happy to run it for them. If not, I'll be leaving. No, run it, run it. Now, hold it, Melvin, hold it. I, I'd rather wait for Jed Clampett, wouldn't you, John? Right. Oh, well, sorry, gentlemen. Perhaps we can get together on another project. No, 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 no. Here we go. <laughs> Show time. <laughs> Beneath the oceans that cover 70% of our globe lie the fields and farms of the future. In these very waters, where my divers once harvested sponges, we will harvest a crop of plankton and undersea vegetation worth billions. Well, gentlemen, the purpose of this syndicate is to develop and build the heavy equipment necessary for submarine harvesting on a commercially practical scale. I think we can do it on a piddling hundred million, what do you say? <laughs> they're in, they're in. Hi, right, gentlemen. Well, we'd, we'd like to caucus for a moment in the outer office. Oh, well, uh, please be brief. I'm due at my club in ten minutes. We'll be a moment. What do you think, Fleming? It worries me that Clampett didn't show up. If this undersea farming was worth anything, he'd be here. That's a pretty new concept. Maybe he doesn't know about it. Are you kidding? Nothing gets by that old fox. <laughs> oh, hey, Jane, out of the way here. Oh, where is Mr. Clampett? What's that? Trying out a new discovery? <laughs> A chemical that turns water into gasoline? Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> Wonder he isn't here. You say Jethro invented it? I told you the kid was a genius. Got <laughs> to get in on it. Yeah, gotta find Clampett. Tell Melvin that we had to leave. But what about the ocean farming syndicate? Maybe he can sell it to a seagull. Yeah, it's for the birds. <laughs> <laughs> When you hear from your father, would you please ask him to call? Thank you, dear. Bye. Well, fellas, what? They're gone, Chief. But the syndicate? I'm afraid they're not interested. Oh. Well, I'd say that about wraps things up, Drysdale. Apparently, your bank doesn't have the clientele for something this big. Good day. No, no, wait, wait. Mr. Clampett's big enough. Would you kindly remove that tourniquet from my arm? <laughs> Thank you. Well, Mr. Clampett didn't put in an appearance. But he will, he will. Sorry, I'm late for a massage at my club. He's on his way. I know he is. <laughs> Better come in slow down, Jester. I gotta make a turn at the next corner. <laughs> Jester, I say slow down. <laughs> Jester, <laughs> Must have lost him on that last hill. <laughs> Mr. Sebastian, wait. Let's drive up Look, to Mr. Clampett. I Clamet. told you I'm late for a massage. But I'll massage you on the way. I'm really very good. <laughs> I'll find him and bring him over to the club. You'll like him. He's a wonderful man. <laughs> Miss Hathaway? Mr. Clampett, where have you been? Everyone's looking for you. Well, I had a little inventor trouble. Is the syndicate meeting over? Yes, but there's still time for you to get together with Mr. Sebastian, and it's very important that you do. How come? Well, he has a brilliant new plan for producing food. Is he a farmer? In a sense, but I'll let him explain it to you. I'll have Jethro rush you right over to the Oxford Club. 
Well, uh, Jethro's might tuckered out. He just pushed a truck four miles at a dead run. <laughs> Whereabouts is this Oxford Club? Well, actually, it's just up Wilshire a couple of blocks. Oh, shucks, I'll walk over. Well, uh, you'll find Mr. Sebastian in the massage room. I, I do hope you'll see your way clear to help make his dream a reality. Well, I'll do the best I can. Uh, I'm sorry about missing the meeting. Jethro done the best he could. All's well that ends well. Where is the dear boy? Oh, he's down front uh, working on the truck. He claims he knows just how to fix it. <laughs> Must be the carburetor. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, fine, Uncle Jet. I'm going up the street a piece to see if a fellow needs some help with his farming. Yes, sir. Oh, by the time you get back, I'll have this rascal running better than new. <laughs> oh, 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 Joe. Take it easy. Have a hug. I'm sorry, Mr. Sebastian. You told me not to show you any mercy while the last of those 20 pounds were gone. Yeah, but, Joe, I've been doing my best. I, I've been starving myself for three days. Oh, don't give me that. I heard about those donuts this morning. Oh? Who informed on me? I just happened to date the waitress at the coffee shop. Oh, I gave her a $10 tip. Oh. And you promised me a $100 tip if we got rid of those pounds by tonight. And I'm gonna do it. Yeah, but, Joe, 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 just let me rest for, for a couple of minutes, eh? Well, okay, just for a couple, though. And then I'm gonna beat you, bake you, boil you, steam you, and fry you until those pounds come off. <laughs> All right, it's a deal. Just let me have 40 winks. And... Yes, sir, something I can do for you? Well, uh, howdy. My name is Jed Clampett. I'm looking for uh, Mr. Sebastian. Is he here? Yeah, but he's asleep right now. Down here in the basement? Yeah, right over there on the table. Does he sleep here a lot? Whenever I let him. Well, uh, maybe I better go and come back another time. Was he expecting you? Well, I kind of think he's uh, hoping I'll drop by. Well, maybe I better let him know you're here then. Well, no, I wouldn't. Oh, that's all right. I was going to wake him up to work him over anyway. <laughs> okay, nap time's up. Is huh? huh? Mr. Clampett here to see you? Huh? Oh. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Clampett? Uh, howdy, Mr. Sebastian. Uh, I'll shower and get dressed. Oh, then. no, you don't. You're going to stay right here. You've paid for those donuts. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, hey, hey, hold on, man. No, 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 no. He, he's right, Mr. Clampett. I ate those donuts, and this is the only way I can pay the price. Well, let me pay. Oh, no. <laughs> well, it's better get beat up. Uh, you don't understand, Mr. Clampett. I just have to learn how to keep away from food. Well, you starve. <laughs> I have been starving. <laughs> Three days. My doggies, Mr. Sebastian. I got to admire your pride. Pound <laughs> 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 uh, away, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in some place called the Oxford Club, trying to help this poor farmer. I tell you, Granny, he's a pitiful case. He sleeps in the cellar on a hard table, no clothes on his back, and ain't got the price of two donuts. You gonna grub stake him, Jed? I'm sure gonna try, but it ain't gonna be easy. He's poor, but uncommon proud. He'd rather take a beating than let me pay for his donut. <laughs> Out of here and into the rollers. <laughs> no, no, not the rollers. Not yeah, the rollers. rollers. No, no, no. Granny, I gotta get out of here before I tangle with a fellow that runs this place. He's the meanest, ornery critter I ever seen. <laughs> Poor Mr. Sebastian can't pay him the money he owes, and dog, if this rascal ain't determined to squeeze it out of his hide. Fetch the poor fellow home, Jed. Least ways we can give him bed and board. Okay, into the sweat box. Oh, oh no, Joe, no. No, not the torture chamber, Joe. Let me ride the bicycle. In the box. No, Joe, no, no. uh, oh. Granny, I'm afraid it's gonna take a scrap to get Mr. Sebastian out of here. That fella Joe done took the wheel off his bicycle. <laughs> Thank you for towing me home, Miss Jane. That's all right, dear boy. Glad to do it. Uh, Jeff.
Jethro, I still think I should have told you to a garage to have this engine reassembled. Heck, fire, Miss Jane. I can fix it. All I got to do is figure out where to connect these leftovers. Yeah. Well, bon chance. Uh, I want your Uncle Jet to have this. He and Mr. Sebastian may be going into business together. Good thing I graduated sixth grade. I hate to tackle this without education. <laughs> You know, Joe, I just weighed myself and I'm down to, uh... Joe. Joe, where are you? Oh, let me out of here. Get me out of this thing. <laughs> well, what happened to you, Joe? Well, uh, you remember when I let you out of the steam cabinet there and you, and you kind of staggered into the shower room? Yes. Well, uh, Mr. Clampett came over and gave me a $20 bill. Asked me if that would satisfy me. Well, I thought he wanted them aside. So I said, take off your clothes and I'll work you over. And? Well, that's the last thing I remember till I woke up in here. <laughs> hmm. You know, Joe, I'm beginning to wonder if I should accept Mr. Clampett's invitation to dinner. I, I, I've never seen a millionaire quite like him before. I've never seen one with a left hook like that before. <laughs> Ah, uh, Mr. Sebastian, congratulations. <laughs> I understand you and Mr. Crawford got together. What did you think of him? Quite a fellow, isn't he? Yes, uh, extraordinary. I'm invited to his training camp for dinner. Wonderful. <laughs> training camp? Yeah, with the right handling, he could be the next heavyweight champ. <laughs> well, uh, you'll enjoy dinner up there. Granny's a wonderful cook. Of course, some of her dishes you've probably never heard of before, but they're delicious. <laughs> According to Miss Jane, it's something that Mr. Sebastian grows on his farm. <laughs> and a prize one, too. <laughs> When's it gonna be done? I don't know, child. I've been stewing it for better than an hour. And it still ain't tender. Sure does smell good. Well, I put in a little piece of salt pork for seasoning. <laughs> Let's just let it simmer there. You come and help me pick some dandelion greens to go with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Size of that mushroom. <laughs> well, come in, come in. I'm glad you could make it. Oh, thank are. you, thank you. I, uh, hmm. I see you got some clothes. Uh, oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Mrs. Sebastian was telling me that's hand loomed Irish tweed. Got it on Bond Street. Well, now, don't you worry, it looks fine. <laughs> Wanna borrow my razor? <laughs> no, no. I got a little surprise for you, Mr. Sebastian. You hungry? I, oh, I've never been so hungry in my life. There you are. Two dozen of the finest donuts money can buy. Just a warren and sugar. For me? For you and no strings attached. <laughs> no. Proudest man I ever seen. <laughs> would have took the edge off of Granny's vittles anyhow. I'm sure she's got something wonderful cooking. <laughs> you just dump them right in the kettle. The kettle's empty. <laughs> empty? Yes, ma'am. No doubt just to have a taste, but you know me and mushrooms. You eat the whole thing? Yes, ma'am. Didn't have a lot of flavor, but it was mighty filling. I've never seen anything soak up so much gravy. <laughs> Now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. 
You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.